Hey, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. How are you guys? I'm okay. I slept most of the day. Couldn't handle this kind of energy. <laughs> There's a lot of squares, a lot of like energy that is stagnant. Uh, so I'd like to do a little video about Pluto going direct. It's been retrograde since April 20th of this year, and it's been standing still, its energy here on Earth, for the last few days. And we still have a few more days to go. Wanted to give the little breakdown of Pluto. So a little about Pluto. Pluto was discovered February 18th of 1930. Which is weird because Pluto was in Cancer, and Cancer represents the home. Well, what's the home of Pluto? Scorpio. Okay, so it's the, the ruler of the underworld. And when this was discovered, Sharon, its moon, was discovered as well. The sun was in Aquarius, which is like totally futuristic and off-the-wall thinking. Okay, the moon was in Scorpio, which the moon is the home, right? And Pluto is ruled by Cancer, which Pluto was in. So Scorpio literally found its home, which it's crazy how it how you see it in the skies reflect that as well. So knowing about Pluto is knowing really the missing link of our solar system. Okay, Pluto was once known as the god of the underworld, associated with wealth, because you found wealth underground, right? You go plant a seed and fruits grow. But what else do we find under underground? Gems, coal, which was um, a huge source of financial freedom back in the day. Pluto represents more of like the positive type concept of God who presides over the afterlife. I would say the one in between the earthly life and death and the heavenly life and death. So it kind of, it's like the in-between world because I could say that we're dead to the spiritual, let's say heavenly energy when we come to earth because now we're physical and we're physically alive. So that's why I say that. Um, if you want to understand the atmosphere, okay, so this all dates back to Pluto and like getting to know Pluto as the planet because it is this ruler of the in-between. We'd have to understand the atmosphere and you must understand the surface to know and understand the surface composition. You must understand geology. And if you want to understand geology, you must understand the atmosphere. So it's literally just the cycle that loops back around. So they are all tied together and they're not separate. So we have the instruments that we need to find all this information that we need. So start looking in our own lives. What can we do? So it's a good time to see where your roots come from. Like, where, what are you? What's your ethnicity? Where does your family heritage come from? What was life like back in their days? And how many are left carrying on the name? You could actually Google your last name and see how many are still around on the map. Getting to know your history will help you better get to know yourself and possibly what is holding you back from evolving or ascending to the next chapter in life. You could even look at things that are more closer to you um, that you identify with, like your childhood and your parents. And what was that like? Because that would be the surf surface composition of Earth, right? To try to better understand ourselves as humans and as human consciousness. So as far as Pluto being found, we have been slowly unveiling the truth of our deep emotional attachments to things that are holding us back from fully aligning with our true authentic self and where we came from. Literally, it's like, you know, just unfucking yourself from all the energy that's of the earth that's tying us down to ascending to 
our heavenly energetic selves. That's authentic, our authentic self. We have been chiseling away since April at trying to clear out all the yuck and removing it from our energy. So when we rebuild our new structures around our new energetic ascended self, the foundation is more stable than it was before, okay? Because right now Pluto is in Capricorn and it's clearing out all of the junk. It's literally starting fresh and new for the transformation, okay? So once we have energetically held hold on to the things that we want to hold on to and let go of the things that we want to let go that's no longer serving our higher self, then Saturn's going to come into Capricorn. At, I think that's December of this year. And it's going to be rebuilding. That's exciting. It's rebuilding after Pluto destroyed it. So that being said, we want to make sure that the shit has cleared out, that Pluto has cleared out all the shit. So that's kind of what this energy is now that Pluto is starting to go direct and it will be direct through the end of this year. So it's like literally little piece by piece. Like sometimes we have to be reintroduced to the things that we really desire and want. And then we can go from there and start picking out the things that are still left. Like once you have reconnected with your desires. Okay. So otherwise when Saturn comes around to build the new structures, it's going to be built on like the past ash and debris and gunk. And that's not going to be a very stable foundation. Okay. So it'll, it will eventually crumble and we want, we want legit ass foundation. You know what I'm saying? Got to create that that legit foundation so we can build our new house, you know? And so all like these hurricanes and everything, it's like literally destroying everything that is not stable, okay? Only the stable survive in those things. All the things that we're supposed to hold on to and keep, and then all the rest just gets washed away. So once all that debris is just laying there from like the hurricane or your old house, you just sweep it, and then you dump it, you get rid of it, and then you build your new house. And this time you'll have learned what things stand and what things don't stand. And then you can build that accordingly. So for the horoscopes, today is September 26. I will be talking a little bit about the energy that's going to be happening through this week, okay? So the sun is in Libra. And it is opposing Chiron, retrograde in Pisces. So Libra is the scales, right? It's balancing the light and the dark. It's literally right in between the underworld and the light, right? Between the summer and the fall. And this energy could either take on more of the shadow, the underworld, or the dark energy, or it can take on more of the light and that's where the imbalance happens okay so finding the balance in your relationships with others not attracting the extreme energies like too passive or too aggressive and finding the assertive balance in your relationships so healing yourself is not an option but healing through experience and others will help the relationships that you would like to see manifest in your life Taking where you have been and what energies you have to let go of. So taking where you have been and what energies that you have let into your life in the past be transformed. So these are past things that have not served you, which you have to look at your current life and those lessons that you learned. So as well as your relationships that we have with our parents. This will help heal the partners that we are and the partners that we attract. So Sun is also square Juno. So Juno is the marriage type partnership asteroid. So sometimes you feel like you have to choose between relationships or intimacy versus independence. And this does not have to be. Maybe the partnerships 
that you have or that you have had weren't suitable for your lifestyle or your healthy balance. So you can have balance in both in both energies where you're balanced with your intimacy and also your independence. And these are found in the right energy or a creative solution so that you can achieve your goals and maintain healthy relationships. All right, next is the moon in Sagittarius. So the moon in Sagittarius is coming up to some potential roadblocks, but don't let these get you down or cramp your flow. You know that hard work and sacrifice will always pay off. So as long as you are tackling the obstacles or find a way around them, you will get to the prize eventually that you've been working so hard for. going to square Mercury and Virgo today. I think this is like a Tuesday, Wednesday type energy. So it'll be squaring Mercury and Virgo. You may have a hard time expressing your emotions or feeling in a constructive and truthful way. Save your rants and your fits for another day when you can verbalize them without seeming like a dick. You always cook horrible food. I hate the taste. It just ruins my whole day. She just find another recipe. So the moon is square Mars as well. So try not to be forceful or intimidating today and try not to take your issues out on those around you. The moon is also square Neptune. Your dreams and ideals may shoot so high in the sky that those around you are not with your plans. So try not to leave your loved ones out of your big plans in life. Guess what? Mommy's going to travel the world and ride elephants and go swimming with scuba diving instructor. Oh my God, my life is going to be amazing. Well, if you have them. If not, shoot away. Shoot for the stars. Okay, the moon is also square Chiron. So there is some inner conflict with the healings of your past wounds. And it may be hard to transmute those wounds into growth and life. Know that you are going through such things to learn more about yourself and to help you become a better person. So not to worry, all the trials turn into enlightenment. So the moon is also trying your honest and Aries. You may want to be unconventional today. Do something new outside of your daily routines. Maybe try another route home or stop and have a bite to eat at a restaurant that you've never tried before. Oh, I haven't tried that place. I wonder if Chuck E. Cheese has good food. I'll try it. Lots of energy today that wants you to break free out of your daily grind. Maybe plan an adventure for the next day that you have off. Saturn in Sagittarius opposes Vertex in Gemini. Get your knowledge out into the airways, whether it's poetry, your blog, videos, or writing a book. Saturn in Sagittarius also squares Neptune. You may encounter information that you did not see before, or maybe you have been feeling something that is not aligned with your prior beliefs. Secrets are being revealed now. So just let go of the ego wanting to be right and investigate what your new findings are. Saturn is square Chiron as well. So recognizing the pain that surrounds us is experienced equally in our lives where our inner child meets our adult minds. Saturn is conjunct Lilith, okay? This is bringing the goddess energy into reality and into your own life. So your ego drive is being pushed aside it's like Lilith pushing Eve out of the way and saying, move, bitch, get out the way. Saturn trines Uranus, so bringing the new and different ways of looking at things to the surface and trining the North Node as well and these, these new findings and energy that is driving our reality. 
it's coming into our reality now. So talking about the whole masculine and feminine energy, Mars and Venus are both opposed Neptune. So Neptune, this dreamy, out there planet that has no structures or boundaries. It literally just blends its energy. It's kind of like the collective energy, okay? So they're being opposed by the masculine and the feminine. And they're trying to understand whether the things that are being revealed to them are illusions of reality or delusions. So the best way to deal with this opposition is to meditate on your truths. And then from there, balance what you are imagining with your reality. So make moves once you have understood what is being unleashed. Chiron opposes Mercury. This is saying like, try not to express yourself and your emotions if you have not wrote them down first and reread it to yourself to make sure that it's truly how you feel. I fucking hate you. You've ruined my life. I never want to see your face again. The end. I fucking hate you. I never want to see your face again. It's a, little, it's a little harsh. And the Chiron opposes the sun. We uncover our fears, wounds, and weaknesses. This will invoke questions about our relationships surrounding us. I feel like you never listen. I feel like you're never here. You never even go hiking with me. Well, I know because you have no legs, but. And their direct connection with our relationship with our fathers. All right, so this is a lot to take in and a lot to chew. Like, I understand that. I just gave you a shitload of information, but literally that's what Libra is about. It is about our relationships that we have with ourselves and those relationships that we have with others. And it, a lot of it stems from our relationship that we've had with our parents. And it goes back further than that. Our relationships that we have had with our ethnicity or our generations. Okay. So our culture dates back to where we came from. It's all one and the same. And it's just trying to understand where we come from and how we can transmute all of the past into the new and create our new world. All right, guys, I hope this helps you with this week's crazy energy. And it's also it could be very tiring. You could be lethargic because transformation isn't easy. And the truth could not be very easy either, but the truth sets you free. So remember that. So make sure to like my videos, subscribe to my channel, and share. And if you'd like to make a coaching appointment, or you'd like a personal reading, or you'd like just someone to talk to, I'm here for you. My email is below, lucidlivingcoachleoqueen at gmail.com. I hope you guys have a lovely week and really embrace this Pluto going direct. I mean, it's been retrograde most of this year. I'm glad to start to feel that things are starting to move forward again. All right, guys, love you. Peace out. You always cook horrible food. I hate the taste. It just ruins my whole day. Did you just find another recipe?